Uh, let's talk about TV, shall we? Uh, South Park joining the Panderverse. The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon. And we're talking about gargoyles. Welcome, nerds, to the TV news. That's a little ambiguous, don't you think? This is a clip that is taken from the larger Week in Nerddom that gets posted up on the main YouTube channel at Generally Nerdy or youtube.com slash Generally Nerdy, however you have to go about it. This section of the news, we're talking about TV shows and episodic shows on streaming networks. I'm still working out a way to say that that isn't such a mouthful. Either way, it's going to be TV shows, right? That's how this works. And so let's just get into it, shall we? Uh, this week, we have no uh, follow-ups or corrections. That's always good, but we do have some trailers to talk about. First up, we have South Park joining the Panderverse. I guess technically this is a movie announcement, but it is South Park and it's going straight to Peacock is where you stream South Park, I'm pretty sure. Or if you want the old episodes, I'm pretty sure they're all still up on Max as well. Either way, <laughs> Panderverse is going to uh, uh, Paramount. Did I say Peacock? I meant Paramount. Uh, so yeah, it's going there. And this just looks this uh, way on the nose. This is exactly what they needed to make right now. Uh, uh, most of the boys, not all of them. I think Kyle is the one that does not get swapped, but most of the boys all get gender and race swapped for their movie version or something along those. I don't know. I was too busy laughing at the trailer to uh, to catch all of the details, but either way, it's going to be great. So go watch that trailer. Our next one in uh, TV shows is Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. This is the Rick and Michonne series. We got this trailer from New York Comic Con. They were there. I'm super hyped for this because Daryl Dixon is so freaking good that I can't not be excited about it. Uh, yeah, so we got, it's 37 seconds. It's just enough to, to keep you actively salivating for more quality Walking Dead programming. And yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna keep gushing, so let's move on, shall we? From there, we got For All Mankind. It's the Apple TV Plus series. The season four trailer has just dropped. I'm not watching this one, so I'm not super hype on it, but it is pretty big franchise, so letting you know that that is there. Uh, and then our final trailer this week is Invincible. Season two starts November 3rd, and it can't get here soon enough. While I do appreciate appreciate the social commentary and the parallels that they do with the boys' properties. Uh, the, the creative team behind Invincible, I think they do it better. I think their nuance is much more well thought out, if you will. So yeah, Invincible, check out the trailer for season two and season two launches November 3rd. All right. From there, let's talk about some regular ass news. We got a couple of things. Uh, we're getting, speaking of The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon season two is coming. And we got the announcement that Melissa McBride will be returning as Carol for season two. Also of note for The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, season one is so far the most watched premiere of anything on AMC Plus in the history of the platform. Also, it is on pace to be the most watched series on AMC Plus, which, you know, is saying something that's pretty freaking cool. Uh, that's what we got for Daryl Dixon, though. Let's go over to Disney. We're talking about gargoyles. Now, here's the thing. Disney owns the rights because they bought out Fox, which means they can really do whatever they want with it. But when you hear what I'm about to tell you, you're not going to be as excited as I was when I first heard, read the headline, Disney live action gargoyles series coming to Disney+. Plus. That sounds on the surface fan-freaking-tastic. However, when you take into consideration the rest of the announcement, a lot more trepidation sets in. So, what do I mean by that? Well, they gave a little bit of a synopsis, uh, kind of a teaser, really, for the series, and it makes zero mention of any other gargoyle besides Goliath. So Goliath is the only one. Uh, so we have no Demona, we have no Bronx, no Brooklyn, etc., etc. None of the uh, Manhattan crew, as they're called, are going to be, if, if this is to be believed, because like I said, this 
theoretically they could add to it and they just realized they mistakenly didn't use the right words, but I'm not holding my breath for that because it's a long shot. But uh, so yeah, we don't have Demona, we don't have the Brooklyn crew or the Manhattan crew rather. We also have a change to the curse that created them as stone creatures. So in the animated series, the curse is that during the day they turn to stone. They, they, in the lore established by the animated series, that's not how they started their existence. Their existence was they could be out during the day and they, they communicated with humans. Uh, I believe they still slept primarily during the day, but they were not stone. They were not nearly as vulnerable. And then they get cursed because the some shady business goes down. Like I'm kind of brushing over this quickly, but with their human clan that they're protecting, and so they get cursed, and they have to spend a thousand. It's it's a thousand years as stone, just as stone forever and then once that thousand years is up then they will retain their stone likenesses during daylight hours they turn to stone during the daylight uh, so this changes that in that it doesn't sound like the curse is the stone it sounds like they're keeping the stone as like that's just part of being a gargoyle and not like something that was cursed upon them so fairly minor in the scheme of things, I think, but still a change that could turn into something a little bit more than just minor. So yeah, we will have to remain to be seen. Uh, in charge of this, we have Gary Doberman, uh, who's going to write and show run, and then produ production is going to be James Wan's uh, Atomic Monster production studio. So some big names there so hopefully they'll turn out something that is worth watching uh, that is what we have for tv streaming so let's get into suggestions for tv this week we have fall of the house of usher i just i it took me about three days to go through it because i had to work the day job and was editing and so on and so forth and also lost a fair amount of sleep because i was still trying to get my mortal kombat hours in and I, I'm not going to lie, it was totally worth it. It's totally worth only getting the four hours of sleep like two or three nights last week because I was watching this show. It's really, it's not Haunting of Hill House good because remember this is Mike Flanagan, but it's really, really good. Personally, I would put it just behind Hill House and just in front of Bly Manor. So that is why this week your suggestion is the fall of the house of usher on netflix once again nerds this has been the tv and streaming news for the week taken from the main show the week in nerddom which is posted on the main channel youtube.com slash generally nerdy uh, thank you for joining me here nerds before we go always always remember that if it's generally nerdy it's probably here <laughs>